you don't have to keep manually placing micro VAs one after the other. Just use smart VAs and let it do the work for you. See, in any advanced PCB design, space is a premium. And as engineers are pushing for more compact, high-performance devices, our good old through-hole VAs just don't quite cut it. That's where higher interconnect density design steps in. HDI allows us to pack more functionality into smaller footprints by leveraging advanced VR technology, specifically micro VRs, blind VRs, and buried VRs. Something, by the way, I'm really excited to share with you that Flux now supports. So by the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of what these VRs are, how to create, manage, and use them in Flux, making your design more compact. With that said, let's get started. Blind vias are the type that start on one of the outer layers of the PCB and stop at an inner layer, helping to connect surface components to inner layers without running traces all the way through the board. This type of via can allow drilling after board assembly, but can also be drilled before the layers are connected. Buried vias, as the name suggests, are vias which are completely contained within the inner layers of the PCB, invincible from the outside. They are crucial for connecting internal layers without affecting surface real estate. From this definition, you can infer that they are usually drilled before the board is fully assembled. One defining characteristic of blind, buried, or any via, as a matter of fact, is the size of that via. When these vias are small enough that for them to be precisely manufactured, you'd need laser drilling, they become micro vias. Micro vias are extremely small vias whose diameter is usually between 25 to 150 micrometers. But note, uh, this diameter is usually limited by the hole depth to hole diameter aspect ratio, where the depth of the hole cannot exceed the hole diameter. And different manufacturers have different capabilities. On the actual PCB, these vias can be arranged in two different configurations. This can be stacked or staggered. Stacked vias are, as the name suggests, vias which are perfectly aligned and placed on top of each other across multiple layers. On the other hand, staggered vias are not perfectly aligned on top of each other, but are offset on different layers like steps on a staircase. Now that you have a solid understanding of what these vias are, let's jump into Flux and see how you can get started. While on your profile, go to new project and for this part i'll create a new blank project give it a moment to create it and open it i'll just add a few schematic components so that i can later demonstrate placing these smart vias on your project while routing after that you want to be in the pcb editor you select the layout from the object tree list and on the inspect panel on the right, you want to find the object specific rule section, click add and search for stack up. When you find it, click add again. You'll see a new drop down menu has appeared. From the system's default parameters, you could see that Flux create a standard for layer stack up. If you want to change this, you can click on the drop down menu and select whichever stack up you want, and that will come with a basic through hole via. For this tutorial, however, and this is what you will do to get a more advanced control over your stack up, I'll click the pen icon to open the stack up editor. You can use this bottom scroll bar to move left and right, and this side one to move up and down. In this stack up editor, I have two tabs. One where I can manage my layers and via configurations. Here I can delete layers, add more layers, rearrange them, and do a bunch of other things. Scrolling to the right, I can add different kinds of vias here, but more on that in a second. I also have another tab where I can configure my via hole sizes. By default, you will have two configurations the mechanical drilled and laser drilled. You could add more configurations by clicking add hole config 
then to change the drill type, double click on it and choose the one you want. The same applies to changing the values here. Just double click and you can begin typing. So this is where I want to start. I'm going to delete the one I just added and edit the default ones. I want my mechanically drilled vias to have a whole size of 6 mils and adding the annular ring, I want the minimum size to be 8 mil. For the laser drill vias, I want to have 4 mils here and 6 mils here. Great. Now let's go back to the stack up and vias tab to start adding different via types. To add a via configuration, I click the add via button and then to add a via object, I'll click the add via button. Here I can change the start layer, end layer, the drill types and size of the via. Whatever you defined in your via hole config will show up as a drop down option here. I will choose these values just because I like to see everything that relates to the via when I highlight it but you could leave this asterisk and whatever sizes you had defined in the via config will be used. Think of via config as containers which houses different kinds of via objects. It might house one via or more than one depending on your layer count. I'll add another via config here and a via into the configuration. I want this to be a buried via, so I'll change the start layer and end layer, and I'll keep the drill type as mechanical drill. Add another config, add a via, change its start and end layers, and also make it micro via by changing the drill type. Let's add one more via config. However, we'll add three vias to the config effectively creating a stacked via. I'll change the top and bottom vias to micro vias. In Flux, this is how to create stacked vias. Otherwise, without this type of config, vias will be placed in a staggered way. You can rename the different configs by double clicking at the top of the configs and typing a preferred name. The last thing I want to talk about while we're still looking at this stack up editor is prioritization. This is a very important concept when it comes to these configurations. Essentially, how different configurations are organized from left to right is how they are prioritized. That means if I had, for example, two kinds of vias going from top layer to mid layer one, the one that is to the far left will be the default one. Let me show you real quick. I start routing from this pad, I drop a via from the top layer to mid layer one, and end the trace by pressing the escape key. This is the micro via, and you can tell because of how it is represented. Let me show you the difference. Delete the trace and go back to the stack up editor. I'll drag the blind via such that it comes before the micro via. And this means now that the blind via will have a higher priority. You can see this is now the blind via and this is how it is represented visually. Remember I said there's an easier way to get started using templates? Let's look at that now. You do this by going to your profile, go to create new project, and then search the template you want. When you find the one you want, hovering above it will show you a use button, which will create a new project from the template. If However, you just want to view the template and not create a project from it. You can click the name of the template and this will just open it in view mode. That means you will not be able to make edits. When in this mode and you decide you want to use this for your project, you have to clone it by going to the Flux logo at the top left, clone project, a menu will appear, choose where you want to clone it. I'll select my username for it to go to my profile. That will also take a moment to create the new project from the template and then Flux opens it in a new created project. To edit the stack up or just check to see what you get, go to the PCB editor, select the layout on the right side panel, change from chat to inspect tab and find the object specific rules. Like we've seen before, 
click the pen icon to reveal the stack up editor. Here you can delete via configs which you don't want. You could add more or change their prioritization as you see fit, after which you are now ready to begin routing. Let's say I'm routing from this pad. I start from the routing touch point, and for the first case, I want to transition from top layer to mid layer one. I can do this in three different ways. I can right click on my canvas and choose from this layer options. I could also press the shortcut key V and that will place a via to the next layer in a cyclic way. And finally, I could find the net from the objects list, right click on it, go to add, and then choose smart via. This will place a smart via at the center of the board, so I'm not going to use that. My preferred way is just to right click and choose the layer, so I'll just do that. I'll add three more vias on my canvas and show you how they work. Looking at this via going from top layer to mid layer one in the objects list, you can see only one micro via one two is used here. And this is because if I go back to the stack up editor, it is the first, so it is placed by default when you are moving from top layer to mid layer one. You could change this via type, and I'm going to show you how, but let's first look at the other ones. This smart via is used to transition from top layer to mid layer two. You can see it has three objects in it. There's a micro via, which goes from layer one to two, a trace, and a buried via from layer two to three. Looking at the stack up editor, this is what happens. We are starting from top layer, so Flux tries to find a via that will move down one layer and micro via one, two is the first one. Then it again tries to find another via connecting mid layer one and mid layer two, and this buried via is the first one also. But since they are placed in a staggered way, Flux knows automatically to find a trace connecting the two vias, and that is what you see here. Finally, this smart via connects the top layer to the bottom layer. You can see this has three vias and two traces. Let's take a look at the stack up editor. So Flux adds this micro via 1, 2 as the first one, then adds the buried via 2, 3 as the second one, and finally the micro via 3, 4, finishing the connection. Flux also adds two traces connecting micro via 1, 2 to buried via 2, 3, and another trace connecting buried via 2, 3 to micro via 3, 4, fulfilling the electrical connection. Next, let's look at how you might go about changing the type of via used. As you might be aware, you change the behavior of objects in Flux using rules. So how do I change the via type without having to change the via prioritization from the stack up editor? And you do that with object specific rules as well. If I select this smart via, a toolbar appears here with pretty much all the rules that affect smart vias. You can change the position, you can change the rotation, you can change the connected layers and the via option. The via options is how you change from one via to another via type. If I click it, I get a list of all the via configs that are defined in the stack up editor. If, for example, I don't want to use this micro via one, two, I can click it to remove it from the via options of the smart via. Flux will automatically change the via type to the next high priority via that can fulfill the same electrical connectivity requirement. In this case, it is the blind via 1-2. If I want to change back to the micro via 1-2, I simply click it to re-add it to the via options and it becomes the high priority, thus being used again. I can do the same with this. If I want to use a through hole via, I can remove all the via options by clicking on all of them to only be left with the through hole via or 
via configs that cannot be able to fulfill our connection from the top to bottom layer. These rules can also be found here, and if they aren't by default, you can find them by selecting the Smart Via, clicking Edit under the object-specific rules, choose Add, and then search the rule you want. The position rule changes the actual position of the Smart Via, but note this might not preserve the connectivity, so you might want to use it sparingly. The rotation rule changes the rotation angle of the Smart Via. Flux automatically finds the best rotation angle by default, but you can be able to change it by editing this value. The connected layer rule dictates which layers the smart via connects. For example, this via connects the top layer and mid layer one. If I wanted to change this and connect the bottom layer, I click this box and select the layer, and Flux will automatically add vias to fulfill that electrical connection. There's also the keep out rule which I can add by going to edit, add, then search it. Click add to add it. You can use this rule to change the hole to hole distance. By default, the distance is 250 micrometers and you can change this by editing this field. I used a very simplistic example with these resistors to elaborate the how-to of these smart vias. In a real world scenario, this setup will hardly be the case. Smart vias shine when there are, are hard constraints on things like real estate, and building such dense boards can be hard and very time consuming. To see how Copilot can make the process less hard, check out this video. And that does it for this tutorial. I hope you now have a solid understanding of what smart vias are and how they work in Flux. If not, just leave a comment down below with any questions that you might have, and I will try my best to get to each and every one of them. If you found this tutorial useful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.